All right, welcome back. Better knows best. It's like episode twenty-two now, Pat. I feel like I haven't seen you in like a month and a half, man. Hi, it's good to be back. Well, I had you specifically on tonight for basketball because the NCAA tournament's going on, and there's a whole shit show of things going on right now. Yeah. Um. So I was going to bring a bracket, but then I just decided to do what over ninety-nine percent of everyone else has been doing with their brackets and just flush it down the friggin' toilet because it is absolutely destroyed. Um, you know, first and foremost, probably what's on everyone's mind is even if everything else went according to plan, I guarantee you 99 out of 100 brackets are ruined because of what happened with the UMBC Virginia game. Everybody knows that. Um, the thing that is really amazing to me is, okay, so like two things. One, at halftime, right? This yeah. game is tied at 21-21. So not a high-scoring game mm-hmm. at all. I don't understand why Virginia, after halftime, okay, so number one, they had only scored 21 points. They mm-hmm. had been held to 21 points. And the other thing is, UMBC has scored the same amount of points as them. Yeah. Two things nobody expected. And this team couldn't make the proper adjustments <laughs> as the number one overall seed and arguably the best defense in college basketball, which is why I think that they, you know, they've earned the number one seed over the year. I don't know if anyone remembers. They started the year unranked. Yeah. They were not ranked whatsoever and then worked their way into a number one overall seed in the tournament and um, not to go on a tangent too long, but we've talked in the past about how defense wins championships, and mostly we have yeah. talked about that with football. And you see it less and less in basketball now with defense, and so because their defense was so disciplined, I really thought that that was uh, justified to give them number one overall seed. And all of a sudden, UMBC, <laughs> whether or not you want to call them disciplined or undisciplined threes, would not miss. Yeah. They just started dropping bombs. I guess Virginia didn't allow them in the paint. So they're like, all right, we're going to toss them up because they're they're all going in. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they say sometimes you live by the three, you die by the three. They li- they lived. They lived and lived and lived. Oh, they lived. <laughs> yeah. They, that, they, they lived like kings. <laughs> um, and they earned it. You know, you you can't yeah. say that any 16 seed that beats a number one overall seed didn't earn it. First ever. First ever of all time. I mean, an ultimate yeah. choke job. Oh, I mean, yeah. people are starting to talk about it in the echelon of upsets. Um, it deserves to be there. Now, oh, yeah. you know, it has come to be a flash in the pan because UMBC lost to Kansas State, which I think most people thought would happen. I mean... I I don't see, you know, a 16 seed going. Now, if they had gone to, like, the Elite Eight, Mm -hmm. possibly the Final Four, then, you know, it would just be, you know, it would be a choke without the fluke. I mean, even against Kansas State, though, I mean, it was still 43-50. to So it wasn't like they got ran. Right. Like everybody expected them to happen against Virginia. Yeah, they were leading for the first 10 minutes. You know, they had K-State, the the defense of, what's the guy's name? Starts with an M. Mauru, M-A-U-R-U. He was the defensive player of the year in, in their yeah. division and um a scrappy little guy only five seven five eight mm-hmm. but constantly just a nightmare with the steals i think he had like five steals in the second half alone and that was key mm-hmm. and that's what i that's what i wanted to talk about with defense yeah um you know huge these takeaways but unlike the Virginia game, they were not able to capitalize on the turnovers. And that also took a lot of time off the clock. So once um, K-State was able mm-hmm. to uh, capitalize on their possessions, you could see the game starting to run away yeah. in their favor. But you're right, yeah, 50-43, to 43, it, was, it was not like what the first round game was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there was, a, there was a, I mean, just going on, we're going on upsets really right now, essentially with this whole, I think this whole podcast essentially is going to be about is yeah. this, this giant upsets is, I mean, North Carolina losing Xavier, Michigan State, um, shit, there's a couple other ones. I mean, there's always those little ones. You Some pick. school that I got to be honest, I'm sorry guys, I had no idea existed, Loyola, Chicago. <laughs> I did not. Beating a top five Tennessee. I, I mean, I had him beating Miami, but I did not have him beating Tennessee. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that also screwed me up in my bracket. <laughs> yeah, this year, 
was the ultimate bracket buster. Um, and I was talking to a friend earlier about, uh, I can't remember how long ago it was, maybe it was 2013 or 2014, when Duke lost to Mercer. Oh, my God, yeah. Another school that I you know, barely knew existed and obviously had no respect for. You yeah. know, in mea culpa, they came and it's like any given Sunday, this little, you know, rinky-dink school mm-hmm. could beat, Arguably, you know, the one of the most uh, celebrated college programs in basketball history, um, and everyone's oh, you know what? That was the year that Warren Buffett offered a billion dollars. Do you remember this? For, uh, for the for had to be a everyone had to unblemished have a perfect yeah. bracket. Everything had to be perfect. Is it the playing games? That too? was the year. Even what? the playing games or no? Who? Even the playing games or no? I think. Uh, I don't know about the play-in games, but right. even so, like, say yeah. those weren't included. The yeah. odds of, and oh. so it was, like, closed off after, like, 10 million brackets or something like that. But if, it doesn't, it could have been closed off after 100 million brackets. Right. Who on earth would have Mercer beating Duke, just like who would have a 16th seed beating the number one overall? Who would have a 16th seed beating, like, a four or five? It's just crazy. Yeah. Um, and so, but it was, you know, it's exciting, and I think that, um... So, so let's talk about another aspect of the tournament now. Right. Um, in terms of like TV ratings and what the network mm-hmm. wants. Okay, so I think that while we're still in the earlier rounds, maybe even in the Sweet 16, the network doesn't mind these upsets because now in the age of social media, mm-hmm. everything is so widely discussed and gets so hyped up. Um, that upsets really stir interest in the tournament. You know, it's not yeah. like the brackets just go according to plan. But on the f- uh, flip side of the spectrum, let's be honest. The um, what is it? CBS that's putting on mm-hmm. the, CBS, putting on the yeah. tournament, right? Yeah. They are hoping and praying, just like the PGA <laughs> was. The Tiger came back. They are hoping that Duke. Villanova, Michigan, you know, they were probably wanting one of the North Carolina schools, Mm -hmm. one of those, we're probably not one, but like two or three of those schools to make it to the end because that's what's going to draw the most viewers. I think, you know, Duke draws the ire of pretty much everybody else outside of Duke, North Carolina. Yeah. Or, uh, no, wait a minute, it's not, yeah. Um, What is it, Chapel Hill? Where's Duke? Uh, Durham. Durham, yeah, right. Okay, so everyone outside of Durham. You Durham people. Um, (laughs) But, you know, when you've established a legacy such as they have, that's, you know, that's kind of what, you know, I guess is probably what, you know, the, um, you know, the, uh, I I don't know what network showed the Super Bowl, but they probably didn't want to see, you know, uh, who'd the Pagers be? The Jaguar. They probably didn't want to see Eagles Jaguars Super Bowl. Now, brilliant defense the Jaguars had. You know, the Eagles. Yeah. Um, you know, were exciting all year until they're it's not sexy. QB. Yeah, but anyways, let's not go off on a tangent on that. But I think just um, in yeah. discussing the ratings, you know, that's that's yeah. something that they should be talked about. That's what they that's what they want to see. Um, I mean, uh, now, you know. I've I've mm. kind of been going on and on, so maybe I'll introduce a new subject and then let you go. I think that um. I, I I mean, I, I got, you know, okay, I got to be honest and, like, give credit where credit's due. I truly believe that, like, Duke starts three first-rounders. Um, this guy, Bagley, uh, when I think right now I've looked at most of the— I've looked at as, about as many mock drafts as I can without puking because, I mean, it's like every day 17 new mock drafts come out. And a lot of them for a while have had eight and that kid from Arizona going number one overall. Mm-hmm. I mean, a 7-1 guy who can move, kind of hard to pass up on that with the first pick. Oh, yeah. So, um, which they project the Suns to have because they are beyond awful. Um, Do they still have Alex Lynn? I think the Suns? Yeah. Yeah. So, I think, and you tell me what you think about this. Um mm-hmm. I th- this uh, Bagley, Marvin Bagley at Duke, mm-hmm. you know, if there's one thing that can be said about the tournament, because, you know, now there's all these, like, one-and-done guys, mm-hmm. um, that's just the way that basketball is going. You know, you just, yeah. you, you ball out your freshman year, and you, you want to get in the NBA to get on get on that contract. Well, yeah, because you got to be um, 19, right, still? You have to be one year removed from high school. Okay. So, basically, college is your tryout, and what a better platform to have it than at Duke. Um, 
you know, Kentucky. Uh, oh, that's right. They're gone, too. Mm-hmm. Kentucky. Oh, my goodness. The, they, CBS <laughs> would have loved Kentucky, um, who puts a lot of studs into the league. John Wall. Um, you know, John Wall, Carl Anthony Towns, Derrick Rose, for a while. Boogie uh, we, Yeah, what happened to Derrick Rose? <laughs> uh, Boogie Cousins, is that what you're about to say? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Deontay Fox. DeAndre Fox, Fox, um, Anthony Davis, the unibrow, Mm. all of which, except for DeAndre Fox and DeMarcus Cousins, were number one overall picks. So that school puts serious talent into the league. John Calabari knows how to build talent. He really does. He starts five freshmen, and uh, I think... um, you know, I mean, we it's kind of how Derrick Rose's career has really suffered, although I, I wouldn't call him, like, that type of bust because he's really been suffering with injuries. Mm-hmm. It's not like he's a talent bust because he had a brilliant MVP season. He'd tear, like, he's, three ACLs. I don't mean to cut you off. Yeah, sorry. yeah. No, 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 no problem. Yeah, it's um, meniscus and mm, stuff. But anyway, yeah. so going back to that, um, the NCAA tournament does really give you a great opportunity to raise your stock, and I'll tell you something. Now that Arizona, they're out. They lost to Buffalo, yes? Mm-hmm. Okay, so Aiton is out. His resume, that's done. Mm-hmm. His tape, that's done. He cannot add to it. If Duke can at least go to the championship game, which is never a stretch, mm-hmm. and if the main reason is Marvin Bagley, which I think it will be, I mean, that's not necessarily out of the realm of possibility to be the number one overall pick. The only other thing, and I thought this was interesting on the radio, and then you tell me what you think, is that um, – uh, what's the kid Hunter from Virginia? Who was the broken hand or broken oh, wrist? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So they they they're dominant all year long, right? Mm-hmm. Only lost three games. Only lost three games, and all of a sudden he's gone, and mm-hmm. they lose to a Cinderella story team by twenty points. Can you make a case? Can, can that guy come out and say, I mean, maybe to at least draw interest and raise his stock, I wouldn't blame him. Be like, I want to be the number one overall pick. Look what my team does without me. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no. It's um, it's kind of like when, if you I would say kind of like when you're the MVP on a shitty team. If you, like, almost, you know what I mean? But he's not on a shitty team. But if you took like if you took the, the best player, hypothetically, yeah. hypothetically say, you take LeBron James off any team. It's, you know what I mean? Yeah, look what happened when he left yeah, Cleveland. Right. Significantly different. Um, yeah, I think that that's an interesting point to be made. And so I'm wondering if yeah. it sounds kind of weird. Like you really have to, you know, you really, you really have to like Rubik's cube that into some <laughs> way of raising his draft stock. So if you think about it, he could, and I assume he will enter the draft. Mm-hmm. Lots of guys think that you know. One year is enough. I mean, I'm sure yeah. that if they didn't have that, any, if they didn't have that, if they still allowed you go from prep to pro, mm. oh, they would do it. Oh yeah. Now it'd be a huge mistake for a lot of them. I mean, not everyone can be LeBron, Kobe Bryant, uh, Kevin, Kevin Garnett, all these other guys that went from. Look to Kwame Brown. Uh, oh, oh Jesus! So we really <laughs> have to go there. You know what? We're on basketball. Let's let's rip on Kwame for sixty seconds. <laughs> all right. Um, <clears throat> now, not necessarily all Kwame's fault because someone has to pick you. It's not like you just. Pick yourself as the number one overall pick. Right. And Michael Jordan thought that he, that Kwame was going to be some injection of energy and talent. Um, and I mean, it was just a, you know, it was a, it was a catastrophic failure. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think, I mean, you also have to look at the other, other side of the coin on that when that happens, um, you know, and another conversation entirely could be done about, yeah. you know, football and improper draft picks. But it's, I mean, at the time, you know, Kwame was seen as, like, the number one pick. I think it's still probably risking a few people's minds going from high school to, and that's why they don't do it anymore. Yeah. You know, because not everyone is LeBron James. Not everyone who's coming out. And LeBron tried to go after his junior year. Oof. Yeah, after his junior year <laughs> of high school. Now, you know, we do, we don't really know. I feel like he's still he's that good. You know, he's a generational player. He probably could yeah. have prospered in the league, but I think it was good that he was at least made to finish high school. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, he has said in the past that if he was playing in um, today's system, that he would have gone to Ohio State for a year. Yeah. And so now I'm I'm wondering if that's where his son LeBron James Jr. Um, will go because he'll have to be yeah. one year removed yeah. from high school. And I assume that although everyone and their brother will be falling over themselves trying to get him, um, 
because you know if you watch if you mm. watch that kid's tape, he's you know he, he's he's a uh, <laughs> he's a you know a miniature version of his father. He's totally he's he's got absolute serious game, mm. and so. I think that he, he, you know, I assume he'll end up going to Ohio State to honor like where his father would have gone. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, dude, this tournament, this bracket. Well, I was going to say just before we jump into right. who, another uh, another game uh, right. in the tournament, but listen, you know Kobe said he would have gone to Duke. If, you ha- if he would have gone to college for a year, he would have gone, gone to Duke. Yeah, well, and I, I, I think And then, that, I um, ha- then I would have had to hate him. Yeah, it's it's tough, too, now. Um, I, I think that that, that doesn't surprise me at all. That's the first I'm hearing of this, but that doesn't surprise me at all that, um, I think that every other basketball player, and that's probably a low number who aspires to go to like a great college school, Duke. Um, and it's almost in that respect that I wonder how heavy their recruitment process is because those four letters are. Yeah. probably do the recruiting themselves. You probably got coaches and parents and players themselves sending stuff yeah. in and trying to then get Duke scouts to come there oh, yeah. rather than do, you know, and it's probably similar with Alabama and football. Um, but yeah, I'm not surprised at all that, that Kobe would want to play there. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And um, saying a little bit about Kobe, it was interesting. I was thinking about this today. I think that like players who, um, because I think I was thinking about like how the fact that LeBron has played on two NBA teams, and Kobe played his entire career in LA. He came out of high school, mm-hmm. and I think he was the thirteenth pick in his draft. I can't remember who was number one. Maybe it was Allen Iverson. Does that sound right? Mm. Nineteen ninety. I don't know. I can... Look that up for me real quick. Yeah. Um. So, but I know he was the thirteenth pick, uh-huh. and if I'm right, I don't think anyone can uh, blame whoever is GM of the Seventy Sixers for picking Allen Iverson. But anyways. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, that says a lot that Kobe stayed on the same team his entire career. I mean, he did he did have um, no first selection was Derek Coleman of the New Jersey Nets of ninety of the that 90. was Kobe's draft. Uh, you asked what the ninety draft? No, because Gary Payton got drafted that year. Gary well, Payton was two. You said ninety. No, no, no. Yeah, well, no, Kobe didn't get drafted in ninety. No, you said ninety though. Oh, I did. Yeah, maybe I meant like ninety nine or two thousand. I think Kobe <laughs> Allen Iverson was the two thousand one draft. I believe. Yeah. Maybe that was Kwame Brown. Good God. <laughs> I was like 90. I was like, Dan, help me out. When was could be drafted? Um, I think that... Uh, 1996. 1996. He went, he went, he Who was thir- the number one pick in that draft? Um, uh, looking it up, but just keep going. Okay. But, um, yeah, to, to play his his entire career there and win five titles. I mean, but he did, ha- he did have help, though. So, I mean, like, he had, well, he had Shaq. Yes, he did, but and remember, and he had, he had tw- Shaq for three of those titles. And, yeah, Shaq was finals MVP for all those. So, I think, mm. you know, it, it's kind of apples it's kind of apples and oranges with, who you know, who was really, like... Allen Iverson was the first first selection in that draft. I knew it. I'm so good, aren't I? Aren't you glad you brought me? I did. Aren't you so did you, glad? Did you ever... Did you hear that... Was it Kobe said Kobe or somebody else said they're so glad Allen Iverson wasn't six five. Oh Jesus! Because <laughs> if he would have been like six or even six two or something six three, he still would, he would have been so much more harder. I mean harder to deal with. Than. I think they would have won the finals that year because basically it was Allen Iverson dragging the Seventy Sixers <laughs> to the finals. Brian, that wasn't, year. Brian that year wasn't Brian Scalabrine? Wasn't Brian? Scalabrini on that team? Guy. Um, <laughs> what did they call him? The White Mamba or oh, something God. crazy? I don't know. Anyways, there's some cult. Of personality we had left, um, which I, I guess most people agree was Kobe's doing. Um, they still won two more titles. Yeah. And so they beat like a depleted Celtics team. And so when they beat them again, when they were with all their superstars, that kind of gave validation yeah. to Kobe and his Lakers. And you know he wanted that. He was he was definitely the type of guy that was hungry for everybody on the other team to be healthy mm-hmm. and then kick their ass. Oh, yeah. So mm, him at Duke, that's a national championship. <laughs> that would have been scary. It been real scary with him and Duke, but I was gonna say we we're talking about getting back to these crazy games this week. I had I did not have Marshall winning this. I I, I did not see Marshall beating Wichita State at all. 
Not at all. Not even close. I was like, oh, are you kidding me, Wichita State? I just need you to win two games. Two. That's it, two. I'm not, I'm not a basketball scholar by any means. Yeah, needed uh we needed a lot of stuff <laughs> that we didn't really get. I don't know what we did to deserve this. <laughs> um, Syracuse. I didn't hit Syracuse. Okay, no. then that's next. Yeah. Uh Syracuse I mean, I hate talking about it, but they 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 are going to get annihilated <laughs> by Duke. Duke is going to walk all over. I'm telling you, Mar- I'm telling you, watch Marvin Bag unless Grace Allen starts tripping people again. Um, that kid, what is going on with that? Did you hear, see recently you, that you, video of, um, I, I don't know, what did he throw a pass or something and then basically like hip yeah. check a player? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw And that, huh? I'll admit, all of those videos of him either like hip checking a player or like tripping look almost unintentional, but they look more intentional than unintentional. Well, also, I'm like, what is his deal? Also, he has a pass though. He has a past of tripping people, so now every time he, every time he does something like that, it's going to be magnified. Now I am not a Duke fan, you know what I mean by any means, and okay. I hate Duke. The passion, I'm a big Maryland fan. So, but anything he does now, anything he does, it even looks like he sticks his foot out to like you know you stick your knee out to block a pass, and somebody yeah. runs in it, it's going to be yeah. unintentional. Well, okay, that's fair. That it's going to be magnified. You know, like there are some players in leagues that anything they do is a Probably that's blown okay. Out. Okay, so uh, as a as a reference, that I'll say, do you think Zaza fell on Brian um, Russell Westbrook's leg on purpose? No. Okay. No, I don't. Okay. There uh, you no, go. and I yeah, that's actually really good. Well, I, I don't know if it's the greatest analogy because it does look like Grayson Helen does his stuff on purpose. Yeah. I think that um, the other weird yeah that that that, that whole Zaza well they he's had uh, with, with, yeah, incidents Russell. with Russell Westbrook yeah. before. I think he's I think he's kind of just like a klutz. <laughs> Like he's kind of like a clumsy that's, oaf. That's what he his team, looks like an oaf. That's what his team said. That yeah, he's just. I think he's just. He's just like clumsy as hell. Yeah. I can't. Im- I mean, he like fell. It did not look like yeah. he intended to hurt Russell Westbrook. And I mean, uh, you could fall a lot it, harder if you really wanted to. Oh sure, it, yeah. he could have elbowed him yeah. right on the ankle or something, yeah. or he could have. You know, his ass could have fallen on Westbrook's ankle or whatever. But, um, you know, Russell Westbrook. Uh, uh, I think, he, you know, he's he's got. I don't want to say he's got an attitude because he's he's arguably the best player in the NBA. I mean, he's he's averaging. Well, okay, so that's not true. He's he's a third of an assist away from averaging a triple double again. Mm-hmm. I it's just absolutely mind blowing the engine on that guy. He is, and so he you know he deserved this unbelievably huge contract he got in the offseason. He got it, you know, at a perfect time right after he won the MVP award and did average a Mm -hmm. triple-double. But anyways, going back to the Zsa and Grace Allen thing, don't think Zsa did it on purpose. I think the incident beforehand when something happened and Russell Westbrook was on the court and then Zsa stood over him, I was like, dude, who are you? I think he threw a, I think it was a screen. It was a moving screen or something? A moving screen. Yeah, which the Warriors, they've had issues with for a few years now. And he's like standing over him and I'm like, Really? Like, yeah. you, like, enjoy, enjoy it while it lasts. Yeah. Okay, because I can't wait until the next day when Russell Westbrook absolutely baptizes him with a posterizing dunk. You know it's going to happen. Yeah. And uh, I just, it was like, what? I don't know. He's just, he's kind of an interesting case. I think there was another thing where, uh, he I don't did, know if this uh, was this season or last season, where he, like, closed in on Kawhi Leonard. He stuck his foot in under right. Kawhi. Yeah, and Leonard, yeah and Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard was, was going up yeah. for a shot, and then Jaja tried to block it, but took an extra step. Yeah. Was looking at the basket while it happened, but, you know, the NBA has tried to, like, move away from players closing in on other players while they're in the air because Kawhi landed, and, of course, where'd he land? Right on that size, 87 foot. <laughs> And ruin so that was the, that's called the Bruce Bowen special. So, but anyways, going back to the original point, Grace Allen just got some weird stuff going on. But the other thing is, yeah, Marvin Bagley, yeah. look for that guy to drop no further than yeah. number three in the draft, and his opportunity to go number one overall, it's coming. It's yeah. it's coming. It's a it's a great way to to raise your stock, and I don't see why. I mean. The guy from Arizona, who'd I say was his Aiton? Mm-hmm. Uh, his defense is nothing spectacular. Mm-hmm. Now, you know it harkens back to our discussion about the NBA and how defense is. Okay, players play defense in that they stand on the other side of the floor when they don't have the ball. <laughs> I mean, James Harden 
I've never seen a guy move slower back on defense because he's dying for that cherry picking pass <laughs> where he can just score. The man loves to score. Um, um score but, and get some money. But yeah. So you know, if Bagley can prove enough that he's like a two way player and really be pivotal in uh Duke's uh-huh. progression, which doesn't necessarily have to happen. Remember, we both don't like them and hope that they lose to Syracuse in yes. another great upset. Yes. Um they're rolling over on Syracuse, but I hope that they <laughs> I hope that we can all be wrong again. And why not? My bracket's already a joke. Yeah. I mean I think I think you and I both had did who did you have in the final? Who did you have in the final this year? I had Virginia and Michigan State. Virginia and no, not Michigan State. Uh let I had me Michigan. look at your bracket real quick. What do we have here? This is it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Virginia and Duke. Yeah. That, that's you, you think you had Virginia and Duke, like a, a rematch of the ACC final? Okay, I'm, I, I didn't say I was picking favorites. <laughs> You're fine. Yeah, did, you know, but um, I I didn't think that, you know, the number one overall seed with a top defense yeah. would, would get stumped. Well, no. And um, Duke starting three first rounders, yeah, hard to bet against that. And I don't do it. Um, now, maybe we could have had like a factual bracket mm-hmm. and then a hopeful bracket, which would have looked <laughs> obviously complete. You know what? We should have done that. Yeah. Which would have looked completely different. For example, UMBC would have beaten Virginia in my hopeful <laughs> bracket. That would have been awesome. So, you know, but uh, I think they, who was the last was, water under the bridge? Who was the who was the last game last night off the top of my head? I can't remember who the last game was because whoever was it only had twenty two percent of like that team getting this far or something. Maybe it was Loyola Chicago. Like, don't, no, don't... I think Chicago Loyola played Tennessee Saturday. Okay, night, didn't they? Someone, um, somebody. I saw. I got a message today. Alert. It was like only twenty two percent. Oh, Xavier did Xavier? They, was, was, yeah, yeah, they yeah. lost. I was yeah. like, God dang it. Yeah, that was the Man, one. They're yeah. all freaking losing. Yeah. I mean. Do these teams – okay, so, you know, I know it's been the, the main subject, but I think it merits a lot of discussion is with the Virginia-UMBC game, did they just think that they could mail it in? Did they just be like, all right, guys, look, you know, we're – you know, let's let's mm-hmm. get, let's get have a little warm-up game. And the number 16 UMBC said, look, we have nothing to lose. We're going to put it all out there. Yep. And it was that perfect storm of everything clicking for UMBC – and almost everything clicking for Virginia in the first yeah. half, and virtually nothing clicking. So would you would you call that then a trap game essentially? A trap game. I don't think I'm familiar with the term. Okay, so a, a trap game is essentially when Help you. Me. Oh my god! Sorry. Tra, tra, no, a trap game is when you're playing a team you should you should easily beat. Essentially, it happens, you to the don't. Sk- happens to the skins all the time. Apparently, oh, <laughs> gee, no, it does. Well, yeah, I guess in Washington sports, it certainly yeah, does. But- I think we have okay. So, if you want to talk about the skins and trap games, it's like at the end of the third quarter, then it becomes a trap game. Like you should beat them, and then what the hell? Like those guys <laughs> would beat the Patriots if they only had to play three quarters. Yeah. For some reason, the Redskins, you know, but, you know, so, don't trigger me like that. Let's let's not go down that <laughs> rabbit hole some I, other time. I, I could make a whole other some podcast other of what, oh, gri- we, what uh, grinds Pat's gears. Yeah, well, yes, what really grinds my gears, anything that starts with W and ends in Washington sports. It is so <laughs> outrageous. And so I'm just trying to be a casual observer. <laughs> but, man, when I... <laughs> I, you, you know, going. I like bleed burgundy and gold. So when it's going on, I get into it. Yeah, you know, no. it's my time to have fun. No, and shame on me. No, and I should know by now. No. And so I don't. So t- t- two teams I didn't expect to get this far. I'm just trying to bring it back a little sure. bit. Is even from the ACC, which which has been kind of getting beat up a little bit. I thought, but no, seeing is you have three teams so far. Which I didn't expect Florida State to be going this far. No, I mean, yeah, I, in I, basketball. I, no, I had him beating Missouri. I had him losing to Xavier, and that's who that's who won last night. Was the yeah. I had I did not see Florida State beating Xavier, and then Clemson. I didn't have Clemson getting this far. I had, no. I had Clemson losing to Auburn, and they waxed Auburn. Yeah, that was also embarrassing for Auburn. Um, I think my bracket had Auburn winning. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it, it, it I, even uh, what is it? Even even okay. Here's no UNC. UNC getting smoked by Texas A and M. By 21 points. Yeah. It's almost like yeah. not only is the story these upsets, but these embarrassing 
losses yeah, lopsided. by teams that should not. Okay, were you talking about those trap games? Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. Lopsided. That's yeah. the perfect word. Um, and just inexplicable lopsided wins yeah. by. What, who's NC? Is that Roy Williams or is that no, 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 yeah, no, no. so because Duke is Shashevsky, aka, aka the Rat Face, and then you have he he looks a little weird. Yeah. yeah, and then you have yeah Roy Williams who uh, UNC. Yeah, I, honestly, I'd like to see you uh, UNC. I'd like to see Roy Williams not be given uh, a brilliant organization and then like bring them up back from the dead. That guy has been blessed with being given coaching jobs at like two brilliant schools. Kansas and Yeah, <laughs> Kansas and so I like I'd almost go as so far as to like call him overrated. Really? Yeah, because those two those two schools were already set and they had great was Roy Williams there when Andrew Wiggins was it Kansas, or has he been in North Carolina longer than that? He's been in Carolina at least like five, six years, I think. Okay, well then, yeah, Andrew Wiggins was already in pros. Yeah. But I'd like to see him like, okay, like at Maryland, you know? <laughs> it's just like, it's so frustrating that like we didn't make it into the tournament and UMBC did. Um, now, it's cool that a Maryland team made it, but like University of Maryland, like the Maryland well, team, well, I the, wish would okay, have been there. But, but... Every uh, there's always going to be an like a was it a one double A school that makes it in or something like that or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. I mean, and they happen to be it. I mean, and Maryland was is playing Ohio State in Wisconsin, Michigan State. Yeah, that's a great point that you bring up yeah. when they moved. You know, when although they there, there's a lot of talent in either division, the ACC, True. the Big Ten in terms of basketball. True, and but even in the ACC, they seem to always make the tournament in the ACC. It seemed like to me at least the, the East, maybe it was more when Gary was there. They always seemed mm, definitely. Yeah, they always like six sweet sixteen or busts. It seemed like with them. Yeah, well, I mean, don't. But see, that's what like that's what I would love. Would you imagine like you know? I know I always make all these like metaphors and stuff all the time, but like, could you? What it must be like to live in New England every year and just basically you're wondering, okay, do we win the Super Bowl or not? <laughs> you have no qualms about division rivals, like rivals in that division. Mm -hmm. Ha, laughable. Um, early playoff round exits, no. Maybe an AFC championship defeat, but yeah, I would love it if, like, like you said, yes, a Sweet Sixteen, especially like when Gary was there, when you mm. said so. The life would just be so sweet. <laughs> oh God, it would be so nice. And I don't just want to like jump on some other teams. You know, no way. You got to like ride mm. or die because eventually, you know, yeah, it's like you know, I'm gonna live like what another seventy, eighty years, God willing. Who knows? Um, could be forty-five. You, you never know. You never even know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that's that's a long enough time. We'll we'll, we'll get back there. <laughs> all right. Well, let's go into. Let's, I want to start. I want to pick some games, maybe. All right. So we are you. I, we already know who you think is going to win the Syracuse Duke game. We don't need to go into that anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's... Okay. So then we have Clemson, Kansas. Uh, I because. Cle I have Kansas winning this game. I mean, I had Kansas win going to the, like the Elite Eight anyway, so I had to stay with them. Eventually. Yeah, <laughs> it's tough to pick against them. Okay, I'll go with Kansas. All right, and then uh, Michigan State, Texas A and M. Texas A and M. Texas A and M. Texas A and M. Mm, riding the upset train. Yes. All Why right. not? I'm... I think this is the year to do it. Yeah, I'm picking them. All right, uh, Florida State, Gonzaga. Uh. I want Florida State to keep going, but I think Gonzaga is going to win. I'm picking Gonzaga. Gonzaga? Yeah. All right. And then we'll wrench her up top. And then we got, oh, actually, Kentucky is still in it. So Buffalo, they beat Buffalo. They smoked Buffalo. Okay, well, then Kentucky is going to win yeah. their next game. So we were wrong. Sorry, we were down on the screen. I didn't see it. Yeah, they're going to play Kansas State. Do you think? Oh, yeah, Kentucky will beat them. Yes. All right. Uh, the, the the game that nobody ever thought they'd have to to call Nevada against Loyola Chicago. <laughs> what on earth? Oh my gosh! Could you imagine if that was like further in the tournament? But no, anyways, I got Loyola Chicago. Keep going. They're scrappy. So do you think they are this year's Wichita State? Essentially, kind of. Sure, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Because Wichita State was it like two, three years, two years ago? They like rode all the way almost to the final four. Almost they went on like a really, really good. Yeah, run. Yeah, I love it. I would be fine with like three. You know, 
Under perennial, Cinderella's uh, kind of perennial um, final fours, mm. and then like one that just is like like a little fl- fly in the ointment team. Like get like, out of here, like, and they like won't. Richmond VCU kind of. Years or like when Butler was there, or George Mate was Madison or Mate when George Mason, right? Yeah, yeah. When they, well, Butler was in the final against yeah. Duke. Yeah, I was like, oh god, please. <laughs> like it's so great. So yeah, definitely Loyola Chicago. All right, and then uh, Villanova, West Virginia, Nova. 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 <laughs> I mean, I can't can't pick them all up. Seth. Someone's got to keep going. Uh, and Texas A and M, Purdue. Purdue, 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 Purdue. Yeah. That's the that's yeah. the team. Okay, so if it's not a, I guess that was the other like four teams that I thought like the networks. Yeah, Michigan, Villanova, yeah. Duke, Purdue. But yeah, I'm picking Purdue in that game for sure. Mm. So yeah, I've actually the top like the well that whole. Bottom part of the south bracket, I fucked up, but <laughs> but the the east though the east of I got is looking so good so far. I've gotten no, Villanova and Purdue meeting in the Elite Eight. Oh, what, dude, what an excellent game that would be! It's a shame it's not further in the tournament, yeah. but I mean that could be depending on the championship game. What to? I would love it if like van, uh, Vanilla Wow. <laughs> Villanova. I can't be the first one to have ever done that. No. Uh, no. Villanova Purdue. That could be the game of the year. Yeah. Well, we'll have to find out. I mean, what else do you have to lose? I mean, you're, we're still technically fighting for scraps in our little uh, little pool of was it ten or twenty dollars, whatever. Whatever it is. <laughs> Gosh, just lucky it's not more. Although I guess we'd all be even because I mean everyone ate chalk and had Virginia going deep. Uh no, I think. Mikey, no, Mikey. Had Virginia, Virginia losing when? No, but his uh, Valerie has Villanova, I think. I think. Well, but she probably had Virginia going deep into it, not necessarily winning the whole thing. But come on, who had who had Virginia outside of the Elite Eight? I doubt anybody did. Yeah, I mean it's highly unlikely. But Valerie, she didn't. She definitely put them in there. <laughs> she had to put them in the Final Four. Anyone in our thing had Virginia out of the Final Four? I mean, I don't know who did that. like in one of my other ones. Uh, yeah, she's got. You should. So you have Villanova in the winner. Winner. I had Villanova beating Virginia. Okay. Are you sure? I'm looking right here. It says Pat Villanova. Oh, good. So I can still have the uh, national <laughs> champion. Yeah. Really, just thought I like kept <laughs> kept moving Virginia along. <laughs> uh, I guess I did, and then clicked the wrong one. But. Yeah, you did. Still in it. Yeah. Good. Well, no, then this I'm, is then I'm rolling this, with Villanova. Well, 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 this is Valerie's actually. Well, wait a minute. Yeah, that's. Are you sh- show me mine? Yeah. I know I picked Virginia. She had she had Arizona and Villanova in the final. Well, I guess she. Yeah. So she's rolling with that DeAndre Aiden. Nope. No defense <laughs> there. Losing a Buffalo, whoever. All right. Mm-hmm. So this is Pat. This is Pat's last chance to win some money because it's definitely not gonna happen to fantasy football guys. This guy sucks. Excuse me, I, I broke even. <laughs> I broke even in fantasy football. I'm coming next year. I'm going to play with y'all. I made, like, lots of trades. <laughs> to make it interesting, I traded Shady away for Adrian Peterson and J.H.I. That, oh. that was a real winner. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, you had uh, yeah, you had UVA in the final. So, essentially, it's who, whoever can pick those little games. I had UVA winning it all. No, UVA losing to, Virgin, to Villanova. What? Yeah. Why on earth? All right, well, fine then. Then I'm just roll. I I really didn't expect that, but I guess I only looked at my bracket once. Now I want Villanova to win it all again, <laughs> in epic fashion, like when they beat uh, UNC or North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Um, the buzzer beater. That's the best basketball game. Definitely college. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think if there's an NBA game. It's probably the best basketball game I've ever seen in my life. That national championship. What's the, what's the one? That's not the one. Is that the one when Duke when, not Duke uh, when UNC hit a game, hit the shot and then who hit the shot against them at the buzzer on Villanova was so, was that the game was it Villanova the was Jay it or was something it, no I'm, at, I'm not asking the person but I'm asking was it Villanova UNC when UNC hits a shot with like two seconds or a second remaining somebody inbounds the ball shoots up a jumper hits the buzzer and wins the national championship against UNC because then UNC won it the next year. It was just when Villanova had inbounded the ball that went down the court, one yeah. pass to the guy who hit the shot, yeah. and what they won by three because it was tied at that point. Yeah, so it, was, it was like 73 to 70. Yeah, was well, it was against UNC, though, right? Villanova, yeah. UNC? Okay, so, yeah, yeah. I was, that, was, yeah. that was a perfect yeah. basketball game. Offense and defense, steals and blocks. Um, um, there were some great fast breaks. There was a game that just happened. 
who was the game in the last two days that happened that somebody hit a shot somebody else comes down hits a game winning shot it was uh it was a, like a nail biter was it michigan maybe was it Mich- uh, was it michigan trying. i don't was think i'm the... gonna be any help here oh my god i think it was the michigan yeah it was the michigan houston game i think houston makes it michigan makes a game win- game winning shot to go to the sweet 16 that's just the best Anytime. Who doesn't like a buzzer beater? Especially when you're not invested in either team and you're just like, oh, oh my God. You know, it's oh, just, yeah. yeah. It's, um, well, I guess suppose it is better if you are invested in the team that hits it, but it's just it's just great to see it no matter what. Yeah, that's that's like that could be like, if we had like a Mount Rushmore of like best like things that happen in sports, a buzzer beater could definitely be on somebody's. Well, I think anybody anybody's buzzer beater or, or one that, or if you're hockey, if you score when less than a second left, yeah, I mean, because then you just know you know that there's no way you know you're gonna win. Yeah, football. Okay, so I would say I don't know, maybe a game and shot, but a walk off touchdown like Stefan Diggs in the playoffs. <laughs> that I think is um, some people might say like the Nick Foles touchdown catch in the Super Bowl. In my opinion, mm-hmm. and yeah, I'll say it that the Stefan Diggs play was the play of the year, yeah. regular season, postseason. That was yeah in. Epic fashion to end a football game. Yeah, a walk-off touchdown. Yeah. That was, I mean, that eclipses, you know, those two Aaron Rodgers walk-off uh, touchdowns, I think. I'm talking about the, I think the one to Janice and Rodgers? Yeah, Aaron Rod- when he beat uh, Arizona in one game, mm-hmm. and then when he beat Detroit in the other game. So it was um, Janice and then Cobb, maybe. Jennings. Jennings? He had, yeah. He said three. So he said one to Rodgers against the Cowboys. Hit the Hail Mary. And they had Jennings against the Lions. Jen- Jennings? Yeah. Is that the Greg one? Greg Jennings. I thought, what was the one, the one that Rodgers caught then? R- Richard Rodgers. What's the one Richard Rodgers Oh, you're caught? right. That's right. Yeah, you're right. Richard Rodgers. Yeah, Jennings. That was the Hail Mary. <laughs> <laughs> I was like. <laughs> yeah. I was like, and that was, he's, that guy's not even on offense. No, Richard Rodgers, well, because Greg, it was Rodgers to Rodgers. Right? Yeah. That was the Detroit game. It's like. Nope. Stefan Diggs. Yeah. That was, that was, that was incredible. Yeah. Um, well, also. I don't know what I don't know what New Orleans was thinking. All you had to do was hold on to Stefan and well, whatever the, the sideline. Yeah, I don't know. How. Whatever the idiot was that, that just basically him. kind of crumbled into oblivion yeah. instead of hitting him. Yeah, uh, that guy. I mean, if I was him, I would have just gotten out of sight as fast as possible. I would not be able to turn around and look at what transpired, basic basically yeah. because of me. Oh yeah. Well, uh, I mean that happens a lot. That's like a kicker. Like that, I'm pretty sure that guy from Buffalo that went wide right. Like never wanted to ever see his face. Oh Lindell, yeah, that's his was it Lindell or whatever. I don't know his name is Lindell or whatnot. Um, before we get out of here, I just want to just want to bring up to you thoughts yeah, thoughts on the Orlando Scandrick signing, skin signed or, or Orlando Scandrick. I can't like, believe we didn't bring back Bashar Breland. I, I didn't like what? Bre- I didn't I, I didn't like Breland. I like him better than Orlando. But maybe Skandrick. did they did they not bring him back because he wouldn't pass a physical? Okay, well, they, so they did find out that he didn't pass a physical. Maybe that's why it was taking so long before we finally found out that they didn't re-sign him. Yeah. Um, so the extent to which his injury led him to not pass a physical, maybe that's the only silver lining in the Orlando Scandrick signing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know, because all I can say, it was just such a buildup that, like, up until then, I really wanted us. I thought Breland was, you know, a decent corner to a pretty good corner. He's not what Josh Norman can be. Even when Josh Norman's not getting interceptions, his mere presence is distraction enough. I don't know. The Orlando Scandrick thing, I mean, hasn't that guy been hurt? A uh, few years, yeah. You know, so maybe, I don't know, hopefully that means he's, if you he actually believe in this crap, maybe he's due for a good year. <laughs> maybe he's due for a five interception year. I would love to see five interceptions, like one interception every <laughs> three games. Um, I don't know. I but would... uh, I think the Redskins have not been as aggressive as I would have liked mm-hmm. in free agency. Um, I think that, you know, Maybe we could have been more aggressive to make a play for, um, like, like I was surprised that the Browns picked up Carlos Hyde because you know everyone is starting to talk about. Can we talk about the draft for like five minutes? If you want, yeah, sure. We can yeah. Five how, minutes uh, what, t- what time are we on? Are we you're, good for? Uh, yeah, you're good. You got five minutes. Yeah, I 
I, you know, everyone's been high on this Barkley kid who Saquon Barkley. Yes, yeah, Saquon Barkley, mm-hmm. out of Penn who State. is is the best player in the draft. Mm-hmm. Either him or the guard out of Notre Dame is the safest pick in the draft. Um, you know, it's tough to say that about running backs because their careers aren't as long. But I'm I. Sh- you know, I would go so far as to say that Barkley is the best dr- running back prospect since Adrian Peterson. Not Elliott, not Fournette. He is the best I have seen uh-huh. since Adrian Peterson. Um, now, yes, everyone runs well in college. We'll see. But this guy is going to be a thousand yard rusher his rookie year, have six touchdowns, bare minimum. I think bare minimum, he's going to have a Leonard Fournette rookie year. Let me put it that way. Okay. Um, so when the Browns took when they picked up Hyde Uh um in theory that at least told me that they're not going Barkley number one overall and I I always thought it was a stretch that they would because I mean you would hope it's the Cleveland Browns and they've been I mean dog me for a long time but you would hope as an organization that you're never picking this high again and number one overall picks don't come around every you know every yeah. year every other year now i know they had it last year and but anyways yeah um you take a quarterback you take a quarterback number one overall well, they and don't the have, browns they don't have one they just, yeah they, they don't and they, so and you they don't just have traded, one i don't care how they good just, barkley is they just traded kaiser too yeah come on they're they're totally prepping for a quarterback <laughs> um but yeah. uh, i think they picked up high because they know they need a quarterback barkley's not falling to four yeah um the Giants will take him if the Browns don't, and I don't think the Browns will. I think, I, I mean, I guess the you could also use that same theory on the Giants. Look, are we going to be picking number two overall mm-hmm. again? No. This is a really deep quarterback draft. Should we take a quarterback and just let him sit behind Eli for a year or two? The Colts just traded out of the third to, overall to the pick, yep. which I'm ecstatic about because now I guess they think that Andrew Luck is healthy enough and they're now the Colts could still take a quarterback at six <laughs> if they really wanted one they wouldn't have traded out of that spot true. or they would have asked for more from the Jets which they wouldn't have gotten true um so now we know the Jets because they're out of the Kirk Cousins sweepstakes are taking a quarterback at number three you never trade up in the draft in such a way if you're not taking a quarterback so whoever the Browns don't take the Jets will Assuming the Jets don't get screwed and the Giants <laughs> fool everybody by not taking Barkley. In which case, who has number four? Cleveland. <laughs> so Cleveland, could you imagine getting the quarterback and Barkley? Oh, my God. That would be – so it will be really interesting. Yeah, my mind would be blown. It would be really interesting. Of course, we have, like, what, five more freaking weeks to speculate on the draft. You can, you can, who, and, and your and your nervousness can build up some more. Yeah, who the Giants more. will take? Do they take the best player in the draft, Barkley, and have a serious, serious backfield threat for the next five to seven years, whatever? If they choose to extend him, yeah. Um, or do you take a quarterback, the most important position in sports, in anticipation for Eli? Not being there, I mean, he's been on the team for what fifteen years. Uh-huh. You know, two Super Bowls. Yeah, so I don't know. What do you think? I mean, they did bench him last year at one point, right? <laughs> Towards the end of the year. What a ridiculous benching! <laughs> what a stupid! It was as stupid as when the Bills benched Tyrod Taylor. It's just these stupid. You know, the the receiving core was depleted. They can't block. The line can't block for crap at all, which is probably why they haven't had a running game since Tiki Barber. Now, yeah, Barkley is going to need guys to block for him. He's not going to bulldoze everyone in a nine-man box, which is what defenses might do. But Eli, it was just, it was ridiculous. Yeah. And if Eli actually took the high road. You know, he was talking about, look, we're, you know, we're going to put a team on the field that, you know, has yeah. the ability to win, and I fully support the organization's decision. I'm sure behind closed doors he probably thought it was probably ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would have. <laughs> you know, the guy had like a, a street going and everything. Yeah. So, you know, Beckham and Marshall weren't there. Sterling Sharp wasn't there either, right? Uh-uh. Yeah, but her Beckham, one, yeah. I think, is – one of only two or three players in the league, maybe four, that is um, an 
guaranteed X factor on the field. Like if JJ Watt is a hundred percent healthy and like has been a hundred percent healthy mm-hmm. for a year, that's an X factor. Mm-hmm. Brown and Aaron Rodgers. You know, now, you know, I'm sure there are other people screaming at the thing. What about this guy? What about that guy? A hundred thousand percent X factors. It, those guys don't, I think it might, it might be those four, you know, yeah. maybe Julio. I don't know. Anyways. Yep. No, I have no, never mentioning. We should Julio have a draft either. podcast, but we should have the damn thing like a week away. Not. You want to do like, a, do you, are you saying you want to do a mock draft, but like a mock draft podcast? I would love to do, but I think we should just do like. Up to the Redskins pick. All right. I don't think anyone well, wants to hear well, an entire. First well, I'll round. have to get all your schedules and we'll have to coordinate that because yeah, trying, to get, all, trying to get all of y'all together. Yeah, we'll stop at the thirteenth pick where the Redskins. Okay, because yeah, I'm not doing this for thirty picks. <sighs> oh, God, I don't want to do it now. <laughs> all right, well, no. Pat, we got more games this week to watch. We'll do another one next week. Have you on again? Hopefully, if we can get your schedule get your schedule cleared. Love you. I know you love to talk about basketball. I'll talk about basketball anytime. Yeah, but. Thanks for coming, man. Always yep. a good pleasure seeing you. Cool. We're better than his best. Don't text.